And a 10, Hammerhead. Growing up, his father would berate him for speaking Italian in their Russian household and would beat the boy with a hammer when punishing him. So, you know, father of the year right there. I guess that's kind of how he got the name. In school, he would later lie and say that he was Italian, only for a bully named Rico to reveal his lie and then steal the hat he wore, showing the ugly scars on his head from frequent hammer blows. Rico and his girlfriend would be the kills that Hammerhead needed to join the mob, though. Hammerhead convinced the mob that he was Italian, which was necessary since they didn't uh, really accept in inferior stock, as they would call it, and he eventually killed his father with a much bigger hammer than his father ever used on him. Ah, poetic justice. When his head was shattered in a brawl, though, Jonas Harrow discovered him in an alley and operated on him, replacing his broken skull with one made of steel, whereas some versions make this an adamantium head instead. He would later go on to get a full body robotic upgrade from Mr. Negative after being shot in the back of the head with a special bullet, which would have killed him. This is definitely some alpha energy. Coming in at number 9, we have Crossbones. A genetically enhanced mercenary with a hazy past, Crossbones wandered the world as an independent gun for hire until finally catching the attention of the villainous Red Skull. With proficiency in most forms of weapon known to man and a particular liking for stiletto blade enhanced gauntlets, Crossbones doesn't really have an ulterior motive or dreams of world domination, but rather will do whatever grisly task a supervillain is willing to pay him for, such as the time at the end of Civil War where he took advantage of the chaos and seemingly assassinated Captain America. America. Whatever the nasty job, Crossbones is willing to do it, and that's what makes him such a dangerous villain. And it ate Silvermane. As a teacher, Silvio Manfredi joined a criminal organization known as the Magia. With his cunning and superior fighting skills, Manfredi rose to the top of the Magia's ranks. He later became the head of a family, which in mob terms just meant a group of loyal members, not actually like related or anything. By creating gang wars, he increased the power of the Manfredi family, and in the process, he also increased the power of the Magia as a whole, which pleased his superiors, obviously, because more power, it's, it's more power. Manfredi also married a woman named Catherine and father to son, but when he was middle aged, his hair became white, which led to the nickname that he grew to accept, Silvermane. Crime fighters Cloak and Dagger decided to take down Silvermane because of his role in illegal drug trafficking in New York City. Dagger attacked Silvermane and nearly killed him using her powers, however doctors saved Silvermane's life by transporting his brain, most of his head and other vital organs into a robotic body that would then provide him with superhuman strength. Which is nuts, and exactly why we shouldn't try and put our brains in robots. I've been saying this since this list. Don't do it. Coming in at number 7, we have Boomerang. Originally hailing from Australia, and given his identity as a stereotypical joke by an offshoot of Hydra, Boomerang has no actual superhuman abilities, just an incredibly gifted throwing arm that has been utilized over the years to throw more and more intricate high-tech boomerangs. Best known as a thorn in Spider-Man's side, and one of the founding members of the superior foes of Spider-Man, Boomerang would eventually begin to have a change of heart after becoming Peter Parker's roommate and getting a bit too over his head with his relationship to the Kingpin. Nevertheless, Boomerang's incredible accuracy and the quality of his high-tech gadgets means that he's not a villain to underestimate. And it's six Tombstone. Lonnie Lincoln was born and raised in Harlem, New York. He had a congenital disorder characterized by the complete absence of pigment in his skin, which made him an outcast among the children his age. He also had a problem with his vocal cords, making him speak in whispers. The only student who didn't ostracize Lincoln was aspiring reporter Joe Robinson, causing Lonnie to misconstrue this lack of hostility as a token of friendship. Eight years after their senior year, Tombstone had grown to become a mob enforcer in Philadelphia, where Robinson happened to work as a reporter. When Lincoln and tried to kill crime boss Sauzy Montana, his employee witnessed the murder and contacted the newspaper where Robbie worked. Robbie was about to meet with Hipper when Tombstone killed him and arrived at their point of meeting, only to find Tombstone taunting him with the man's corpse. Tombstone let Robbie go though, just because they used to be friends, but later taunted him on the phone, prompting Robbie to flee with his wife back to New York, where he became an acclaimed reporter for the Daily Bugle. This dude is freaking messed up, and if you've seen him in like the, the, the 90s Spider-Man cartoon, that, that version's even freakier. Coming in at number 5, we have Typhoid Mary. A very powerful mutant with multiple personality disorder, Mary is capable of telekinesis, telepathy, and manipulating fire when under the influence of her more violent Typhoid and Bloody Mary personas. 
Her transformations between personalities are so intense that even Daredevil was not able to tell after encountering two personalities that they were the same person, despite his increased senses supposedly being immune to her trickery. Despite being a mutant, Mary has most often fought with both Daredevil and Spider-Man, giving these street-level heroes a headache as they try to deal with multiple violent women in one deadly body. And in four, Kingpin. A crime boss is one thing. A crime boss that to the public is a well-respected philanthropist and businessman is something else. But this businessman is like 300 pounds of muscle. Wilson Fisk is an absolute madman who runs most of New York's and Las Vegas' criminal underworld. However, things get even more intense after his wife is killed, so he doesn't end up retiring. Which he was actually going to do, but you know, then they killed his wife. After the murder of his wife, not only did he resume leadership of his former organization, but he also turned over his files on other criminal leaders to the law through the costumed crime fighter of Daredevil. Kingpin actually helped Daredevil, except now this time he had the motive of ridding himself of any and all rivals. The ploy actually worked though, and as a result of the evidence in the files, many crime leaders both inside and outside the Magia were convicted. In the ensuing power vacuum, the Kingpin rebuilt his coalition stronger than ever before. He moved on to control a great majority of non-Magia East Coast gangs dealing in conventional crimes, and the Kingpin's organization became stronger than any single Magia a family in the New York area. Coming in at number three, we have Barracuda, the arch nemesis of the Punisher. An optimistic and smiling serial killer and gangster, the Barracuda is everything the Punisher stands against and more. Originally just hired by a larger criminal organization to assassinate Frank Castle, the Barracuda's rivalry with the Punisher became personal when their ensuing battle caused the Barracuda to lose both an eye and all the fingers on his right hand. The Barracuda might not have any superpowers himself, but his depravity and lust for violence are essentially unmatched. With multiple moments over the years that rank as some of Marvel's edgiest, such as snorting drugs off of a fresh human skull and engaging in literal cannibalism. But ultimately, in at number two, The Hood. After seeing Electro fight Daredevil as a child, the life of a supervillain really enticed Parker Robbins. With a mother in need of constant medical care, he soon dropped out of high school to steal money to give her better care. His cousin John told him about some valuable material perfect to steal at a nearby warehouse, and together, they broke into it. They were about to leave when they were attacked by a demon in a cloak. Peter shot the being and assumed that he had killed it, but not wanting to leave empty handed, he took the cloak and the boots. For some reason, I don't know why you thought you were going to get any money for it, but whatever. On the way home, he was jumped for his shoes and used the boots to escape. And upon finding out that the boots actually gave him the ability to walk on air, he took the cloak over to John's apartment where he found out that the cloak gave him powers as well, originating from the demon Dormammu, though he didn't know it at the time. A dude with a cloak and boots giving him a fraction of the powers of Dormammu? Yeah, that's a number two for me. Pun intended now. And coming in at our top spot, we've got to go with the classic daredevil villain, Bullseye. An incredibly skilled assassin with nearly perfect accuracy, Bullseye ranks as one of the greatest villains that heroes like Spider-Man and Daredevil have ever had to face. Bullseye was responsible for the death of Elektra and appears to have zero regard for life or any sense of moral goodness, with even other members of the Dark Avengers being disgusted at his lust for murder when he was briefly a member of their team. While Bullseye often finds himself under the employ of characters such as the Kingpin or Norman Osborn, his rather unique powers and his complete lack of empathy make him potentially the most deadly street level villain of all. Number 10. Rorschach. Walter Joseph Kovacs, first appearing in Watchmen number one in September of 1986, was an incredibly violent and ruthless vigilante, not to mention extremely psychologically disturbed. His mother severely mistreated him and his father never knew his son. He grew up driven by a kind of moral absolutism that allowed no compromises, which when translated to his vigilanteism, led him to dispatch anyone he saw fit as deserving justice. Almost like Punisher, but this style of crime fighting also applied to those who stood in his way. When superheroes were outlawed, he went undercover and continued illegally, even teaming up with Night Owl, who brought tech which really complemented Rorschach's investigating skill set. Together, the two stopped many serial criminals. Unfortunately, though, Rorschach was dispatched by Dr. Manhattan in order to protect a terrible secret that could end the world. But his legacy lives on in the second Rorschach, Reggie Long. 
so we're good. Number 9, Hawkeye. Despite Hawkeye, Clint Barton, being one of the Avengers and an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., he has a strong reputation in the source material as a street level hero at times. With adventures that have made for some of Marvel's more personal stories, especially with writers like Matt Fraction who made the character's probably greatest run. It tells an intimate story of how Clint Barton lives his life when he isn't really in the glamour of Avengers level status. Because Let's be honest here, Clinton Barton is a very underrated Avenger and it's understandable why. He is a guy with a bow and arrow. An extremely dangerous guy, but you put him next to an Asgardian god or like a Hulk, who he technically has taken out, although emphasis on the technically. And yeah, he doesn't look that impressive, but trust me, there's a reason he is on the Avengers. Is Hawkeye a street level hero? I saw a lot of people mention Captain America in the comments of the last video, and I debated it for a while, but I simply don't think he has one. Is a character still street level even if they participate in global threats? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Number eight, Hellcat. During her formative years, Patsy Walker's fame obsessed mother, Dorothy, would use her daughter as a way to make a buck, usually while also living vicariously through Patsy and constantly disapproving of her tomboy nature. Dorothy would pressure her daughter into modeling, which she didn't want to do. So when that didn't work out due to Patsy's own lack of interest and commitment, Dorothy started a comic book containing fictionalized romantic adventures of her daughter as a teenager. This gave Patsy Walker some notoriety before she finally joined up with the heroes that she actually idolized, which is honestly a kind of hilarious story. Basically, using manipulation tactics learned from her mother, Patsy blackmailed the mutant Hank McCoy, or Beast, into to helping her transform into a superhero. Patsy tracked down Beast while he wasn't an Avenger and forced him to allow her to accompany them on a mission. And during the Avengers ride along, quote unquote, Patsy found an old costume that once belonged to Greer Nelson, who became Tigra, during her early days as the cat. Patsy took the gear for herself and assumed the identity Hellcat. Now thanks to this suit, plus her natural ability, plus experience over time with training from Moondragon and her husband Damon Hellstrom, Hellcat has become a force to be reckoned with. I just kind of hope she shows up in She-Hulk, but probably not. Number seven, Punisher. Ah, yes, Punisher. Some of you were a little upset that he didn't make the last video, and honestly, it's just because when we're talking about power, there are those that stand above him. Also, I had to include other publishers than just Marvel. But despite being a normal man, Frank Castle's sheer willpower and tactical ability absolutely deserves him a spot on this list, not to mention his seeming unwavering morals. Punisher isn't the type of person anyone should really emulate. He is incredibly dark and incredibly ruthless. And he is an awesome character and his stories are about as gritty and street feeling as you could probably get. Especially the Punisher Max series, which if you are above a certain age, I highly suggest you check it out. Since the passing of his family at the hands of the mob, he has devoted his life to the task of destroying organized crime wherever he finds it. He teams up with many, many heroes in their objectives, which almost always fall in line with his, but these other heroes a lot of the time come into conflict with him over his way of dealing with crime. Nonetheless, dope character, 100% deserves to be here. Number six, Nighthawk. Okay, everybody hold on to your butts. I may get a few things wrong here as Nighthawk was not a character I was familiar with up until this point. So, the very first incarnation of the character to appear in comics was in 1969's Avengers 69 as part of the Squadron Sinister. The Squadron Sinister was actually created by the Grand Master in the image of the heroes of Earth 712, the Squadron Supreme. So the Squadron Supreme was basically Marvel's version of DC's Justice League with Nighthawk as a kind of parody or homage to Batman. On both Earths 712 and 616, Nighthawk is Kyle Richmond, but on 712, the original or real Nighthawk was a multi-billionaire whose riches were built through his father's criminal enterprises, leading him to choose to use the money for good instead of evil. The 616 version of Nighthawk eventually turned his back on the rest of the Squadron Sinister and on villainy altogether, joining the defense as a longtime member in the 70s until his apparent passing. But he's since returned to life, even training a successor named Joaquin Pennysworth before retiring. Due to a potion, Nighthawk possesses various superhuman physical attributes such as strength, stamina, durability, agility, reflexes, and senses due to the unique nature of the potion, though all of his superhuman attributes are doubled at night. Number five, Azrael. John Paul Valley was an agent of the Sacred Order of Saint Dumas. This secret and sacred Order created a hero and protector of their secrets known as Azriel. This 
hero is actually like a legacy type of situation with generation after generation being brainwashed and manipulated from before birth to believe they were the angel of vengeance. John Paul broke this though when he decided to ally himself with Batman after Bruce taught him the errors of his ways. John Paul has gone on to be Batman for a short period of time and he remained a vigilante for the most part after, although he is a wee bit violent here and there. Just a little smidge. His skills were honed by training with Bruce Wayne and he is thus possibly as skilled as Batman, although his lack of experience and lack of finesse kind of makes him the weaker of the two. However, due to his physical capabilities as a result of genetic engineering, he has greater strength, reflexes, and speed than a normal peak level human, which in junction with his trained skills has allowed him to defeat Batman, Bane, Nightwing, and even be offered leadership in the League of Assassins by Ra's al Ghul. Number Four, Spider Woman. Okay, I actually kind of feel like Jessica Drew is a bit above street level as she has gone off with the Avengers fighting all kinds of villains, been de-lifed and re-lifed, and not to mention the whole Spider-Verse thing where she found crucial information that led to the Spider Army defeating the Inheritors. But after that, Jessica Drew quit the Avengers and started working as a private investigator alongside Jessica Jones. During this career, she came into conflict and an eventual teacher slash student dynamic with low level villain the porcupine after dealing with a whole thing with his wife and some kidnapped people. It was a lot. She also routinely interacted with reporter Ben Ulrich and continued this work for a while to support her newly born son. But then again she's also fought Skrulls, been a member of Strike Force, and also became a Kree accuser after that point. So. I don't know. You decide. Spider Woman, street level, or much, much more powerful. Number three, Nightwing. Ah, yes. Of all the members of the Bat family, Dick Grayson was not only the very first, but for a lot of people, including me, he is the favorite. Born to a family of acrobats, orphaned and then taken in by Bruce Wayne, Dick became the very first Robin, appearing in Detective Comics number 38 in 1940, created by Bob Kane and Bill Finger, and illustrated by Jerry Robinson. As you can imagine, he has a long long history and as such a large amount of experience and proficiency. He was the leader of the Teen Titans for a while and when his Robin career comes to an end, he becomes Nightwing to honor another hero by the same name after being told the story of the Kryptonian hero by Superman. He has gone on to take the Batman mantle a couple of times, but honestly it was in 1995 and 1996 when he received his own stories that he really became his own. To set Nightwing apart from Batman, he was given his own city, the decaying harbor town known as Bloodhaven, which was just north of Gotham. For that reason, it allowed him to be close enough to Gotham to stay part of the Bat family, as well as have his own city and series of adventures, and man, it's one of the better street crime fighting stories in my opinion. You should definitely check it out. Number 2, Elektra. Over time, Elektra has become increasingly more and more important in the comics, and specifically to the Daredevil corner of the Marvel Universe, especially considering she has recently taken on the mantle herself. Elektra first started out as a mysterious and romantic figure of Matt Murdock's past. She's been gradually written more and more into an exciting character with interesting motivations. She's been trained in martial arts from the age of 10, being trained by Stick, who gave up on her, and the organization known as The Hand. Elektra's anti-hero vibes and her dynamic with Daredevil is awesome. Definitely feels like a very similar thing to Catwoman and Batman, actually. Current Daredevil writer Chip Zdarsky has written her as another Daredevil by honoring the mantle symbolism while still giving her meaningful new new moral challenges to face while donning that mantle. Also, she has actual powers now, including Assassin's Instinct and Mind Switch thanks to her resurrection. But yes, Elektra, dope as heck. Number 1, Cassandra Cain. There are many members of the Bat family who could all take up spots on a list such as this. For part 1, we only talked about Batman, but for part 2, I'm talking about my three favorite Bat family members, and Cassandra Cain is definitely the number 1. As the daughter of two incredibly capable assassins, David Cain and Lady Shiva, Cassandra has grown up being trained by her father in isolation and with nonverbal communication for the same kind of life. Thanks to that, Cassandra has superb body reading abilities and has made fighting her quote unquote mother tongue being better than even Batman. However, this upbringing has also rendered her dyslexic and with speech impediments when she did learn how to speak. After seeing a man she took down pass away at a rather young age, it changed her perspective on things and she turned her back on her parents. She eventually became became a member of the Bat family as the fourth Bat girl and then moving on to become Black Bat and then 
orphan. Also, her new 52 costume is sick. Number 10, Static. Originally hailing from the Dakotaverse of the DC multiverse, Static, or Virgil Hawkins, has a unique set of powers for a street level teenage superhero. Static's powers allow him to control all sorts of electromagnetic phenomena. Beyond the ability to generate electricity for a variety of effects, he can also magnetize objects and cause people or objects to stick to one another through a strong static cling. He hasn't fully realized the extent of these abilities and maybe when he does he will ascend but for now this teenager uses his abilities to fight for his friends and family and be a force for good in this world and his local community in Dakota City while also juggling school bullies and family finances. Okay before we carry on I found this list really hard to order. Some characters have more impressive powers but lack resources that others on this list have. So my question to you guys is what do you think dictates a hero's level of power? Is it who would win in a fist fight or is it about who could take on more severe threats? Let me know your thoughts in the comments and I'll carry on with this video. Number 9, Black Canary. Dina Laurel Lance or Black Canary certainly has the capability to be beyond street level. Her superpower, the Canary Cry, is lethal to anyone who isn't superpowered enough to take it on, meaning that when she is fighting common thugs and hoodlums, she usually relies on her incredible skills in hand to hand combat that rivals even that of Batman. She has used her skills as an important member of the Justice League, but also alongside her boyfriend, husband, and eventual ex-husband, Green Arrow in Star City. Number 8, Moon Knight. Moon Knight is a reliable and diligent hero when it comes to protecting the innocent, especially at night. Moon Knight more often than not explores the traumatized complexity of Mark Spector's dissociative identity disorder, while just like the show, definitely being quite trippy and supernatural. He is one of Marvel's grittier heroes, more willing to take a punch as punishment than try to avoid it. But his stories often deal with his journey and healing and introspection. Some of his best comic book moments come in Jeff Lemire and Greg Smallwood's run on the character, so definitely check that out. And Oscar Isaac's portrayal in the MCU is an awesome take on the character while definitely showing a bit more of a globe trotting side to the character than his street level crime fighting would normally portray. Number 7, Daredevil. Daredevil has been one character in comics who has been time and time again so damn well written. The Man Without Fear has had a hard hitting list of absolutely excellent writers like Frank Miller, Anne Noshenti, Brian Bendis, Mark Wade, current writer Chip Zdarsky, and so many more. His stories explore the conflicted morals of a lawyer by day and street vigilante by night, not to mention his Catholic upbringing. Matt Murdock's stories make readers feel the weight of a man being pulled in multiple directions at once, and the Netflix Daredevil series does an excellent job of making you feel that way as well. With the disability of being blind, combined with his superhuman senses and the passion with which he protects his city, Daredevil ultimately makes for one of Marvel's most grounded heroes. Number 6, Luke Cage. Even though his powers could land him easily above a street level capacity, Luke Cage respects the importance of communities and nurturing good environments for kids to thrive in. Not only will you see Luke cleaning the streets with his powers, you'll see him actively encouraging and bettering the neighborhoods he deals with. Alongside Iron Fist as the heroes for hire, they make sure to give back to the community whenever they can. He doesn't give up on people and he's active in rehabilitation and re-education initiatives. Due to his work helping reform criminals, he oversaw the Thunderbolts for a time, helping supervillains become heroes. Number 5, Jessica Jones. After her family's vehicle collided with a truck of unknown chemicals, and after being in a coma for quite some time, Jessica Jones awoke with impressive levels of super strength and durability, a hell of a healing factor, the power to fly, which took some time to master, and superhuman longevity. So yeah, she can easily go up and fight with the big dogs. Very easily, in fact. But that ain't her calling. Jessica has done a great job battling her own inner demons, trying to become a better person and hero. Her bond with Luke Cage elevated not only her self confidence, but made both partners better by association. Using her private investigator skill set, she's one hell of a vigilante and a very resourceful mother that could easily put your face in the pavement if you decide to threaten the community. Number 4, Iron Fist. With the resources of a Tony Stark playboy and access to the mystical realms and knowledge in the same class as Doctor Strange, Iron Fist is a character that doesn't always seem like he would be duking it out with gangsters and street thugs. But that's probably what makes him so great. Iron Fist doesn't let his privileges and skill sets stop him from being involved in the local communities that he cares deeply for. He's done a lot of good work for the streets of New York alongside his best friend Luke Cage, who as we've already mentioned, can also be fighting much bigger 
threats if he chooses to. Though New York is never polished and squeaky clean, not by a long shot, helping make it a better place certainly can't be harder than slaying an ancient dragon. Number 3 Black Panther Thanks to the MCU, it's probably hard to see Black Panther as just a street level hero. And he isn't just that, actively joining in much bigger conflicts. But the character has had his fair share of street level conflicts. Having taken Daredevil's place as the defender of Hell's Kitchen for a period of time while Matt needed to recover from the events of Shadowland, and dealing with many street level conflicts when he first appeared as Marvel's first ever black superhero. A whole whack of Black Panther's best arcs tackle social, cultural, and political themes on a level never before scene and they are celebrated for it. As the king of an entire nation, it's easy to overlook Black Panther's capacity to care for a local community and to apprehend street criminals. But it's exactly that struggle that is a key part of his character that fans love. Number 2 Batman Arguably one of, if not the first street level hero, Bruce Wayne has absolutely ascended beyond this with his vast resources and by being part of the Justice League. But his bread and butter is street level crime. Ever since his parents were taken from him at a young age, he was destined to dress as a giant bat and beat criminals to a pulp. But it isn't just his hand to hand combat that makes him such a force to be reckoned with, it's his mind. Known as one of the greatest detectives in the world, he uses his resources alongside his mind to track down perpetrators of crimes ranging from burglary to homicide. The members of his rogues gallery are all so unique and different from one another, forcing the Batman to fight his foes in all sorts of unique ways. On top of this, Bruce has mentored a rather large group of other street level heroes in the form of the Bat Family, who all of which could easily be placed on this list. And number 1 Spider-Man Other than Batman, Spider-Man is most likely to be the first character that comes to mind when you think of the most noteworthy street level heroes. But similar to Batman, Peter Parker seems to find himself jumping in status from time to time, working with the Avengers and other superhero teams to take on threats way above his pay grade. And he can do it too. That's because his powers, mind, and determination have time and time again helped the webhead to take on foes much more imposing than he is in terms of power levels. His willpower does not allow this inspiring hero to ever give up, which is one of the biggest reasons he has been a fan favorite and the face of Marvel Comics for such a long time. He is easily the peak of street level, taking on all manner of foes while being an inspiring member for the community and being a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. At number 10 is Bullseye. Longtime villain to Daredevil, Bullseye has become one of the most powerful and unbeatable villains to be considered a street level threat. His marksmanship gives him that extra fear factor since he prides himself on never missing. So whatever he's firing at you, you'd better hope it's not deadly because it's probably making contact one way or another. Bullseye is also credited, if that's the right word, with killing Elektra in the comics, leading to her very real and lengthy absence. That is until she returns as Daredevil. He's also killed Daredevil's lifelong lover, Karen Page, and the Daredevil himself at one point during the end of day's storyline. This is also a pretty shocking moment, especially given the method by which Bullseye does it. A stab right to the head isn't the way you expect a mainstream Marvel hero to go down, and at the hands of a street level bad guy too. At number 9 we have Harley Quinn. Harley is a relatively new comic book villain all things considered, but in her short time since her first appearance in Batman the Animated Series, she has made a huge splash. Originally the evil sidekick to the Joker, she has since branched off and made a name for herself as a pretty impressive street level villain. She's very cunning, but also shows some very impressive power at times like when she beats down Nightwing or even the time she takes out Wonder Woman single handedly. At least for a time and she does it with sleeping gas. But still, she takes her down. All in all, Harley Quinn has become such a popular and prevalent villain that her street level status has even been contested a few times. My guess is she will soon be given a huge power adjustment for the better and find her way to becoming a higher level villain than even the Joker himself. At number 8 we have the classic Green Goblin. This villain has always been one of Spider-Man's biggest nemeses, but still has always kept his integrity as a grassroots street level villain. Although Norman Osborn has become involved in plenty of bigger plots and missions that concern greater causes than street violence, his persona in goblin mode is still very much a street level threat. 
And with his arsenal of goblin bombs and sleeping gas, he often packs a pretty significant punch at every encounter. But the worst of the Green Goblin's plots typically aim to inflict psychological torture on Peter Parker, which shows Osborne's resourcefulness because street level villains only have so much to work with. In fact, I'd argue that Green Goblin is one of the most psychologically damaging villains on this whole list, often targeting family members and deep traumas that force Spider-Man and other targets of his into extremely uncomfortable positions and tough decisions. At number 7 is Red Hood. After the events of Death in the Family, Red Hood sees his origin story come to a brutal fruition as he is forced to rebuild himself. And as he rebuilds, he solidifies a name for himself as one of the most powerful street level villains out there. He travels the world, becoming adept in all the martial art forms like Aikida, Ninjutsu, Krav Maga, and even Capoeira, among others. His hand to hand combat skills lead him to defeating Raz al Ghul in a fist fight at one point, which is a pretty impressive feat considering the villain is typically a tough match for even Batman himself. Another impressive angle for Red Hood is that he knows how heroes move and act since he used to be one himself, and this allows him to be one step ahead of them at all times. All while keeping street level status, he even goes back to heroism in his own twisted way when he steals the Batman mantle during Bruce Wayne's presumed death. But ultimately his villainy seems to prevail at times like when he kills over 80 men in a poisoning plot while escaping Arkham Asylum. His devilish, revenge driven plots are always pushing the envelope and his mysterious persona keeps him hidden in the shadows as he runs the Gotham Underground as a solo act. At number 6 is Kraven the Hunter. As one of Spider-Man's oldest and most enduring villains, Kraven has had plenty of time to build up his resume as one of the most impressive street level villains in comic book history. And I'd argue that Kraven is one of the most authentically street level villains on the list considering he devotes his life to tracking down and hunting superheroes with little more than some traps and handheld weaponry. But his biggest move of all is when he actually catches and kills Spider-Man during the events of Kraven's last hunt. Although the death only lasts so long, it does show that Kraven is actually capable of following through with even the most ambitious hunts on his list. And what's more, his manipulation abilities also shine through when he successfully dupes the masses into believing that he is the web slinger himself for a time, dashing Spider-Man's reputation and making his comeback that much more difficult. At number 5 is Bane. One of the toughest upbringings on this list, the new 52 Bane spends his childhood in prison, living out his own father's sentence in a setting that teaches him how to fight to stay alive. But beyond his original motivations, Bane has one of the highest strength levels on this whole list. Known to be able to lift 15 tons, Bane doesn't hesitate to make use of his industrial surroundings while taking on his opposition, often using concrete slabs and boulders as weapons and projectiles in battle. What's more though, Bane is often caught in the grips of a venom addiction, which empowers him even more when he's under the influence. This gives him that extra power boost that brings his strength to another tier that is often unattainable by most villainous standards, especially among fellow street level bad guys. Because with Bane, it's not uncommon to see him crashing through a stone wall or shattering concrete floors or one-shotting other villains like Poison Ivy and Man Bat in his fits of rage. At number 4 is Dr. Octopus. Still considered a street level bad guy, Doc Ock seems to be one of the most inventive and high powered villains in that category. With his supercharged intellect, he is known to be on par with Tony Stark and even Reed Richards and often applies his smarts to developing new technologies to help him succeed as a villain. Known as the founder of the Sinister Six, he's also got ties to the rest of the supervillain community and clearly has the ability to mobilize his villain and his counterparts as though it's a second nature to him. But above all, his greatest feat that sort of puts the definition of street level into question is the time when he swaps Peter Parker's mind with his own while he's facing a terminal illness. This leads Doc Ock into a life of heroism as Spider-Man and ultimately kills the one and only Peter Parker in the process. That moment is almost on par with the time he held the whole world hostage as one of the most impressive feats that any street level villain has ever accomplished. Ok, at number 3 we have Jean Paul Valley. Typically going by the name of Azrael, Jean Paul Valley has 
a pretty powerful track record and seems to almost supersede the title of street level villain. But I would argue that he still is in that category and simply exists to show just how powerful a street level villain could get. Having been given a massive genetic enhancement at birth, John Paul already has a one up on most of the other entries on this list with a superhuman set of abilities like enhanced healing, senses, durability, speed, and of course, strength. But above all, he's got a reputation as one of the most intelligent villains with an advanced hand-to-hand -hand combat and swordsmanship stat to boot, using his flaming sword as a weapon of choice in close combat and his projectile blades at distance. He's also got a win out as one of the coolest looking street level villains too, if you ask me. At number two is Kingpin. As one of the most well-connected villains on the list, Kingpin uses the streets to his advantage more than maybe any other villain on this list. Being a big brute with powerful strength and durability stats, he's pretty good on his own, but his real power comes from his social power and influence. He's got the ability to take down his enemies with a systematic approach the same way that a mob boss would in the real world. Except in this case, his cronies are often other superpowered beings who are willing to carry out his evil deeds for him. And if we're not counting social power as part of a villain's power set on a list about power, then we're not truly valuing every angle of the art of villainy, if you will. And although someone like Doctor Doom might have the monopoly on the cosmic level villain community, this is after all a list about the street level bad guys and how they make use of the limited resources they have access to on the streets of New York or Gotham. And there's just no arguing that Kingpin just simply has the streets under his thumb. Okay, at number one is the one and only the man himself. Joker. I feel like I really shouldn't have to justify this entry because we all know that the Joker is one of the best villains, not just on the streets of Gotham, but of all time. And it's primarily due to this resourcefulness I mentioned in the previous entry, that being a street level villain demands. The Joker is well aware that he has always needed to make more of an impact than Batman's superpowered villains, but without the superpowers. And the way that he typically does this is by resorting to psychological torment against his enemies, usually by bringing their family members and friends into the fold or by appealing to their greatest insecurities. And all in the name of a laugh, which just adds that extra level of intimidation to the whole effort. It's the Joker who paralyzes Commissioner Jim Gordon's daughter and takes all morale away from the good guys at that crucial moment. It's the Joker who beats Batman's second Robin, Jason Todd, to death, leaving Batman to find a new sidekick. And it's the Joker who tricks Superman into dropping a bomb on Metropolis and killing the love of his life, Lois Lane. He's never acting alone, but instead of enlisting other villains to help in his plots, he's often enlisting the heroes themselves, turning their own psyches on them if not making their whole lives crumble around them before the battle can even start. There's no need to expound anymore because I can just go on, but when I knew I would be writing this list, there was no question that the Joker was gonna be in the number one spot. 